us and just to worship the name of the Lord tonight. Let us thank him for all the testimonies tonight. Let's return all glory to him. Let us thank him for what he has done. Somebody give the Lord praise. Even what you think he has not done, thank him for it tonight. What you think he has not done, whatever is a desire that you believe he can do, thank him ahead of time for because you know he is able to do it. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. Let's give him all praises in Jesus' precious name. Spirit of the living God, we thank you tonight. Lord, we have come to feed at your feet. Holy Spirit, we ask that you speak expressly. We know that a word from you can change anyone's life. One word from the Lord can turn any life around. Lord, let that word go forth tonight. Lord, speak to people's situations tonight. Lord, speak into people's issues. Speak, meet everyone at the point of his or her needs tonight. Let no one leave this service tonight the same way. At the end of it all, let the testimonies that will come give glory to your name. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. We may be said that you are welcome tonight in Jesus' precious name. We are going to be looking into the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 2 and from verse 2, Now it shall come to pass that in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Tonight I'm going to be speaking on the message title Zion, the place of refuge. Zion, the place of ref refuge. The Bible says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I want to start by defining what is Zion. Zion is the appointed place. Zion is a place of appointment where God people choose to meet with God. Is somebody hearing me? Zion is a place where people gather to meet with the Lord. And somebody want to say, why is this important tonight? Because there is a spirit of the world that is going on now. And you see people boldly say it. You see many people boldly profess to be Christians. But they tell you they don't go to church. Or they are Christians. And they have many reasons for it. And I believe they think is valid. That's why they can put it forward. Some of them will tell you, I've, I've done church in the past, but now I'm a Christian. You don't need to tell me anything about the Lord. Uh, you don't need to tell me about anything about God. Um, I know how to nourish my soul. That is what they say. But that is contrary to scriptures. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, and verse, I'll read from verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold fast the profession, the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promise is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to steer up love and good works. In verse 25, he says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembling of one another. Not forsaking the assembling. Not forsaking of one another. Now, no matter how Christianly you are, 
And no matter how long you have been saved, it is unscriptural to suddenly believe there are reasons to remain as Christians and not necessary to go to church again. No matter how anointed you are, your house is not a place of gathering. Your house, therefore, your house is not Zion. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Your house, yeah, it is good to pray at home. It is good to study the word of, at home. It is good to do everything at home. It is good to live the Christian life at home. But it does not substitute for your appearance in Zion. Are you hearing me tonight? So Zion is the place where God's children gather to worship him. Zion is the physical dwelling of God among men. It is God's tabernacle in the midst of his people. In Psalms 1, 32 from verse 13. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. So my house and your house, no matter how prayerful we are, my house, your house is not Zion. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, forsake ye not the assembling of one another. So there is a blessing, there is a virtue in a corporate gathering of Christians. So it is good to pray at home, it is good to study the word at home, but they are no substitute for your appearance in Zion. And because we just watch and watch, and I realize that in the world that we live today, once something becomes popular, it becomes validated, even though it's invalid. People, we live in a world that people tend to follow the popular opinion. As long as it's accepted, it looks like a norm, then it becomes normal. Then it becomes somehow valid in the heart of people. The Bible says, forsake ye not the assembling of one another. You can do anything, but you must appear in Zion. No one's house is Zion. Praise the Lord. He said, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. Hallelujah. And in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17, but on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. On Mount Zion and there shall be holiness. On Mount Zion, the house of Jacob shall possess. So the house of Jacob, your house will possess their possession from Mount Zion. Is somebody hearing me? So it takes appearance in Mount Zion. It takes constant appearance in the house of God to qualify to possessing your possession. And in Psalms 84 and verse 7, the Bible says they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. They go from strength to strength. As you appear before the Lord, you grow in strength. And this is not talking about physical strength. But of course, it, has, it also manifests in physical strength. But it's beyond that. Praise the Lord. The Bible says if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. What is small? Your spiritual strength. If you faint in these days of adversity, it's because you are vulnerable. Now, things that happen that becomes a whole mess, a whole problem, happen everywhere, but it happens to Christians and they just walk it over. Now, we've had many testimonies in this church. Until you know what should have been or what someone is experiencing, you may not appreciate what God is doing. That is why we we'll celebrate testimonies in this church. Why? Because the Bible says they go from strength to strength, each one as they appear in Zion. Now, consistency is the secret of power. Anything you do inconsistently cannot deliver its intent or its purpose. Anything in this world. 
If you read inconsistently, you are not a reader. If you walk out inconsistently, you are not physically fit. If you don't appear in Zion consistently, something is wrong with your appearance. You are not strong. Bible says they go from strength to strength because each appearance is strength added. Is somebody hearing me? And when we look at it, now appearance in Zion regularly now becoming like a whole school. It looks like old Christians. Those that have known God for somehow foundationally are the one that's taking it seriously. Let me say they go from strength to strength, each one as they appear in Zion. They go. So each time you appear in Zion, you are strengthened, you are empowered to be able to deal with the evils that is in this world. I was in Stockton yesterday, Pastor Peter was sharing the testimony with me. I never. Now, we live in a world of Paris. We live in a world where evil is real, people of God. Now, without constant appearance in Zion, you are vulnerable. Some of the things people deal with, you begin to run around, they are avoidable. Only if you have strength when they happen. They move to their new house on Saturday. Then slept one night. On Sunday, mistakenly, they left for church, but the gas was left on all day. All day. And they were late at church. Things happened at church. They were event at church. By the time they, the family came back before him, there were gas all over the place. And they thought it was the neighbor uh, doing something into the hair. And for whatever reason, they delayed cooking. And somewhere along the line, Pastor Peter came. He said, where is this gas from? Ran around, saw that the burners were hung since morning. He said, even when he opened his closet, a, a, a chunk of gas just flushed out of the closet. Upstairs. Gas all over the places. All over, all day. Now, my question is this. Without them having to come, there is a, gas could catch light anywhere. And before that time, I'm talking about, I said they go from strength to strength, each one as they appear in Zion. He said a night or a couple of nights before, he found himself getting married. With his, his only, with his older son. His wife was no more. Other children were no more. So he said, he said, he started praying. He said, where is my wife? No, I don't want to remarry. Where is my wife? Then he started praying. Then this happened. Let me tell you what happened. At the end of it all, it was him and that only son that came home late. Others had entered before he came. Each one, as they appear in Zion, they go from strength to strength. You don't know what comes on you. You don't know what covers you. You don't, you don't know what is going on in the realms of the spirit just because you appear. Those that appear are not foolish. They are not stupid. They are just scripturally smart. Now, if this had happened the, day, the way devil orchestrated it. He said the natural thing for them to do was to come and cook the moment they got home. And for, somehow the wife stalled and stalled and he didn't start cooking until he came. He said he waited to do counseling at church to pray for people after service before himself and his son came. He said, he took five hours after opening everything. He said, even upstairs, you see gas in the closet. The Bible says they go from strength to strength, each one, as they appear in Zion. People of God, the evil that happens to the world today, the attack, spiritual attack, physical attack, they are avoidable if we maintain our constant attendance and presence before the Lord. 
You call it all religion as long as that is what the Bible says. Each one, as they appear in Zion, they go from strength to strength. It is time we stop finding, looking at our schedules and slotting church services into it. It is time we prioritize God's schedule for our lives because that is God's way of separating us. Let me say they go from strength to strength, each one as they appear in Zion. Praise the Lord. Psalm 34, verse, verse 7. Praise the Lord. Zion is a place of refuge. You don't go before the Lord and go back, go back the same way. One Number one prayer, I always pray towards every service, no one lives the same way. No one lives the same way. Everyone lives empowered. Everyone lives covered. We've had many, a couple of months ago, about three months ago, or four months ago, the Lord lay here on my heart. And it was a strong uh, uh, nudging of the Spirit to start praying for divine protection for every member of the church. And I prayed it for about a month on my own. And the nudging still remains. I knew it was something we have to do more. Now, I'm going to tell you then, we started praying it in the church. Now, I'm going to, we have had close to two near-death incidents averted. Near-death, minus this one they just said. Two near, why? Because of divine covering. Now, one of them, the man is not a member, is the wife that's our member. But because when we pray, every member of Dominion Life and their families, the man doesn't come to church, at least he comes ceremonially, but the wife, solid members, solid member of the family. How it did not lead to a big problem, only God can explain. Divine covering. Without Zion, there is no covering. It is time we understand some of these things. I said earlier on, now, midweek service now is becoming optional. If midweek service is optional, Trust me, Sunday is ceremonial. If midweek service, everyone that has made midweek service optional, Sunday is ceremonial to them. It's the last day. Are you hearing me tonight? Praise the Lord. In Psalms 46, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though they have to be removed. And though the mountains were carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be, and be troubled, though the mountains shake its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the only place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of the dawn. The nations arranged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the heart melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Now, you must maintain your attendance in Zion. And I think Christians are just not smart. We invest a lot of hours on many things that won't do nothing to our lives. We invest a lot of hours on many things that have less importance, not as important as what we get when we come before the Lord. In the course of every week, most people waste over five hours on things that are not necessary. Are you hearing me? Midweek service is one and a half hours. But wait, let me tell you from tonight, that's what the Holy Spirit in my heart. 
Middle service from next week is 7 to 9. We're not going to look at anybody's schedule no more. We are not going to look at our schedules and slot God in. I felt convicted tonight. But like we look at people's schedule, so let's try to manage God somewhere in between so that everybody can be comfortable. God is God. Is somebody hearing me? And in the precious name of Jesus, we're going to be, begin to see the demonstration of God's power in our midweek mid mid services like never before in Jesus' name. Because we are going to turn our Thursday service to school of spiritual warfare. They go, we don't wait till Satan strike. Soldiers don't train at the battlefront. Soldiers are always battle ready. So, do you understand what I'm saying? And we are spiritual soldiers. We thank God for all these testimonies. We thank God for Sister Joyce's testimony. We thank God for Dickness Semi's testimony. Sometimes when we think very well, I don't know what they're talking about, but how do you feel if suddenly your sister was found dead? She frantically called me on Sunday. We didn't get ourselves because many things were going on. I tested her by saying, like, Joy, we are praying. And I thank God for the testimony tonight. No, somebody had a birthday. People flew, flew from places. You don't want any evil recorded on your behalf, on the record, or the record of your event. And Satan can use anything to strive. Is somebody hearing me tonight? So it is time we give God what is God's. It's time we give God the place, the time that he deserves in our lives. Let me say they go from strength to strength, each one as they appear in Zion. Now, so what are the other things that happen in Zion? Where the strength comes, where the covering comes. Number one, Zion is a place where there is a spiritual sprinkling of the blood. Every time, you won't feel it. Physically, you won't see it. But the Bible tells us, every time you appear in Zion, angels are positioned to cover you by the blood of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. Hebrews 12 and 20, 22. I beg your pardon. Hebrews 2, 12. Hebrews 12 verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. So that means the innumerable company. So every time we are in Zion, angels are around. And many people, God has opened the eyes of many people to see many angelic activities in the course of services. I've been in a service before. Over here, where I saw an angel came in, it came, the angel came in like a, like a gift wrap, gift something. And the angel was on its way out, and I heard the angel say, she's not there today. These are real people of God. So sometimes, the fact that you don't know something doesn't mean you should discard it. Now, Bible is Bible. The Bible says innumerable complaint of angels. What does angels do? They are God's messenger to deliver special assignment. So what happened in that instance? It was that day that a package was brought to that person. It was the day she was absent. And God had opened the eyes of many people. I've had many people share with me. Uh, Pastor Donnie, the service, the Lord opened my eyes. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. And these are real people of God. And this is what the Bible says. You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, every Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaks better things. At each appearance in Zion, you are sprinkled in the spirit by the blood of Jesus for your covering. That is why there is no one under the sound of my voice tonight. There is no one that is physically present tonight 
And even those that are present on live streaming, God will forgive you for not coming tonight. But, <laughs> but as many as are in here tonight, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You will not fall for the attack in the night. Amen. You will not fall for the attack in daytime. In the name of Jesus, it will not be your portion that you just begin to manifest strangely and strange things will begin to happen to you in the name of Jesus. You will not sleep elderly and wake up in sickness. One of the things we need to know, why is this important? We've had many people share testimony and we've had many word of knowledge, revelations out of here. When somebody gives someone a shot in, sick, in, in the sleep, it's transference of sickness. If someone bites somebody in the sleep, it's poison vomited into the body. And sometimes some of those things could take months, years, before they begin to, uh, to manifest. So each time the word of God comes, I say, there is somebody here. Uh, praise the Lord. There's somebody here tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we lift up those hands and just worship the name of the Lord tonight? There is somebody here tonight. You feel somebody cut your ear when you were sleeping. Your ear, the hair in your head. I don't know who you are. Anybody here tonight? It's like somebody removed chunk of your ear in your sleep. Let's lift those hands up and just worship the name of the Lord tonight. Who are you tonight? You feel, thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. Lift up those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone tonight, you feel somebody cut part of your hair. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Spirit of the Living God. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the precious name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration of what was told him. Amen. Whatever intent he had in mind, let it backfire on the enemy. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Now, when you may take your seat. Now, listen. Many things happen. Each time there is a call and people came out, evil is averted because somebody appeared appeared in Zion. Is somebody hearing me? Because somebody, because somebody appeared in Zion. Let me say, they go from strength to strength because my prayer is that no one here will see evil. There is so much evil going on in the world. So Zion is a place where we'll experience the blood sprinkling. And in Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 11 and 12, as for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare I will restore it to you. So when a Christian that maintains their attendance before the Lord, when they are challenged, they are prisoners of hope. There is no hopeless situation for a child of God. But we must know that we have our own responsibility to play. Most of the time, we leave everything to God. When doctors give us an appointment, we rush there. Doctor say it's 10 o'clock. They say, come a little bit early so that you can be checked in. We go there right on time. Right on time. Several times I've seen people when prison and worship was going on, they are on the phone outside. They are still talking to somebody. It's God. Now, I, I, I just want by the help of the Holy Spirit, for us to see ourselves in the middle of the word of God tonight. We respect the doctors more than we respect God. We respect doctors. Those of us that can always come and say, even though this sickness is there, but we don't have a solution. Haven't you seen that before? 
some two, three years ago, I went to, to, for my physical. I was going to go for my physical before I went. I just got a note from my doctor. They said my doctor was sick. He'll be away for some time. That day I said to myself in this office, you see how hopeless this world is, what we rely upon. The doctor will be away for some time. And he went for about two years. Another two years, I went again for another physical. Then I saw him. And he told me, he said he had air challenges. But we respect the doctors more than we respect God. You go to see the doctor, the doctor says, I'm going to do a thorough work today. You don't tell the doctor, I only have one hour to spend. The doctor's visit of, uh, what, what do they do? The doctors whose emotions are not connected to any patient. Don't let us deceive ourselves. Let us be smart. Let us be wise. Let us set priority. Let us prioritize our life. Let us give God what is due God. A couple of days ago, I was telling myself, I just laughed. I said, people respect their doctors more than their pastors. Pastors that is laboring. There can be crying. Something can happen to a church member. Pastor will shed tears. Doctors don't shed no tears for nobody. One day I went to see my doctor. Then he just showed up. He said, oh, pastor, how are you doing? How is the church? So I asked him, I said, so how do you get to remember all your patients and what they do? I assume you will remember me by face, but what happened? He laughed. He said, pastor, we are not that smart. He said, we are not that smart. He said, that's part of the training. He said, why the nurse is taking your vitals? We are reviewing your last visit. We look at your profession. We look at your job. We look at vital things. We want to connect. And he says something. If, if they are children, we, we, we have to know to call them by name so that the mother can think my son, my daughter, is the favorite to the doctor. <laughs> he said, we are not that smart. That's what he told me. He said, at Kaiser, he said, with the doctors, we have 2,000 patients. He said, it's 2,000 patients. He said, we are trained never to try to memorize anybody's information. Once you leave, we don't know you. Forget about what we say when you come. That's what he said to me. Then I asked him, I said, if somebody dies, what happened? He said, we may never know. Because the system will replace the person. Once there is a slot, they say there is now opening for this, for new patients. Say, if somebody dies, we may never know. <laughs> I began to meditate on these things and our relationship with God. And our relationship with your man of God. Forsake ye not the assembling of one another. And I like that doctor because he told me the truth. Me, I ask questions. Me, I talk. Praise the Lord. So, Zion is a place where you are sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Zion is a place of new beginning. So now, talking about fellowshipping from home and coming to Zion, the angels don't go carry blood to their homes. It's when people appear in Zion, they are sprinkled with the blood. The more the appearance, the more you are sprinkled. That is why inconsistent appearance is, it means vulnerability in the spirit. Zion is a place of new beginning. Is a place where things start all over again. Where you can push a reset button of life. In the precious name of Jesus, everyone that needs to start all over again, tonight is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Everyone that needs to stop a cycle and start another one, tonight is a new day, is a new day in the name of Jesus. Zion is a place of new beginning. The Bible says, and in this mountain, Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 6 to 8, Isaiah 25 from 6, the Lord of hosts will make all people 
a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well refined wines on the lees. It will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. It shall swallow up death forever. In the name of Jesus, every plan of dying, every plan of death, every calculation of death, every oppression of death in your mind, the thought to die in your mind, the affliction of death against your life, tonight is destroyed, tonight is shattered in the name of Jesus. No one will die around you. You will not die. You will live to declare God's glory. No one will die in your family. No one will die in your community. No one that you know will die in the name of Jesus. Every plan of death is averted in the name of Jesus. Even if there is a sickness that they have said is unto death. In the name of Jesus. Tonight it is reversal. That sickness is not unto death. It is that the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Glorify. Zion is a place of new beginning. We can wipe out every ordinance of evil, every calculation of Satan, every intention of the evil one. God can push a reset button for your life. But tonight is a new beginning for somebody. Tonight is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Remember ye not the things of old. Forget the things of old. The Bible says, now I, sh I will do a new thing. Something new is happening in the realms of the spirit. Yeah. But Zion is a place to start all over again. That's why as Christian. You don't whine. You don't suck about the past. There is no future in the past. If it isn't good, forget about it. You move forward. You can reset the buttons of your life in Zion. Because why? Because God is part of the reset. Hallelujah. He said, He shall, He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. Whatever makes you shed secret tears in the name of Jesus will be wiped off your face forever in the name of Jesus. And lastly tonight, Zion is a place to encounter God in prayer. I'm not saying you can encounter God at home, but it's not as when angelic hosts are present. Zion is a place. The church is a place. How come we have somebody came to church a few years ago and by, by himself, service was not going on, he spent three days at church all day, seeking the face of God. And he would tell me, Pastor, in the evening on his way, can you pray with me? I've been fasting church. I didn't recommend the fast. By himself, Put yourself on a three-day fast. Come to church all day and roll on this altar and shortly after a miracle happened. <laughs> Zion is a place where you encounter God in prayer. Let me tell you how that happens. There is no doubting the hand of God on your life. There is no doubting that God called this church to his existence. There is no doubt that the signature of God is here. So every time you come on this altar, in this place to seek the face of the Lord, you are reminding him, God, that thing that you package for dominion life, where is my portion? That is what you are doing. Church, let me tell you something. It's time you begin to put yourself on one day, three day fast, come and stay in the church all day. Seek the face of God. Nobody has to be here with you. Nobody has to pray with you. If someone I'm here, you let me pray with you, I will. I won't join you. You seek the face of God. I don't know how many times I've been locked in a sanctuary for three days praying before I turn 25. 
I don't know how many times. Because that's how we were trained. Because I was born into warfare. I've read over a hundred psalms before on a day. And not one day. Trying to press in the realms of the spirit. The Bible says those that overcame. Those that overcame. Him that overcame in the book of Revelation. Or whether it's one of God overcomes the world. It is the one that you overcome that becomes a testimony. It is the one that you overcame. That is what God must do. What God will do. But there is what you must do. We are in spiritual warfare. Our experience in life is an adventure into warfare. We are in warfare, but we are not fighting. Zion is a place where we encounter God on the altar of prayer. In Psalms 65 from verse 1. Psalm 61 verse 1, let us read together, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 65 verses 1 and 2. Say, all flesh will come. That's what he said. He said, they will come. They have to come. Not God coming to meet you. You have to come. Praises are waiting you, oh God, in Zion. And to you, the vow shall be performed. Oh, you, he hear prayers, but flesh must come. All flesh must come. Rise to your feet tonight. Rise to your feet tonight. In the precious name of Jesus, on your behalf, praise is awaiting God. Amen. On your behalf, testimony is awaiting God. Amen. On your behalf, praise is awaiting God in Zion. Amen. On your behalf, testimony is awaiting God in Zion. Amen. Say, oh, you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Some of us, we have challenges we are praying over. I want you to reverse it. Make yourself God. Make God or somebody else you. If you were God, that person's attitude to prayer to that thing, if that is your attitude, the attitude, will you answer the prayer? Somebody that has, that needs a breakthrough. I mean, God must appear. Inconsistent attendance. Even when they come, they are distracted with things that don't matter. To so fast by themselves one day. When have you on yourself put yourself on a fast to press through against the kingdom of darkness? When? That person put himself three day prayer and fasting. Three days. And he said to me, he said, the other day he said, um, here I'm going to be in church for the next three days. Will you pray with me when I close in the evening by himself? And God of Zion appeared. My prayer is that you will not abdicate your spiritual responsibility. And my prayer is that it will not be too late before you realize what to do. Each one, as they appear in Zion, let me say, they go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Each one, as they appear in Zion, lift up those hands and draw grace for that strength tonight. Spiritual strength, physical strength, Emotional strength, natural strength. Lift up those hands and receive grace for that empowerment tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and say something to him.
Jesus' precious name. We're going to pray. We put every member of Dominion Life under the covering of the blood of Jesus tonight. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every member of this church, we put under the covering of the blood of Jesus. No evil shall befall us. No evil shall befall them. No evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall me. Every member of Dominion Life, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Sir. In the name of Jesus, against spiritual and physical and medical attack, against social emotional attack we are covered by the blood of jesus tonight lift up your voice and begin to pray we resist the power of darkness and its operations against our life we resist the plan of the enemy we resist every attack of evil attack in the sleep attack in the night we resist it in the name of jesus lift up your voice and pray tonight In Jesus' mighty name. Let us commit every member of the church to the hand of the Lord. We pull down every opposition in workplaces. Every hatred in workplaces. Every opposition against our members in their places of work. We dismantle it tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. We dismantle every workplace opposition. We dismantle every workplace opposition tonight every opposition a thread in the place of work every gang up every trap in the place of work we destroy it tonight in the name of jesus we ask for the spirit of favor for every member of dominion life wherever they walk whatever they do we ask that your favor will prevail lift up your voice and ask the lord in prayer tonight we pray that your blood will prevail your favor will prevail and answer to us in the name of jesus every member of dominion life god's favor over you in your place of work you'll be set apart for favor set apart for lifting in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name and we are going to pray lastly this is how you are going to pray we pull down every resistance spiritually and naturally against our project in brainhood we pull down every resistance in the realms of the spirit in the natural realms uh, every resistance naturally afterly, spiritually against this building project against the advancement of the church to Brentwood in that area we pull down every hindrance uh, every resistance uh, in the name of Jesus uh, lift up your voice and hands the Lord in prayer lift up your voice and hands the Lord in prayer we pull down tonight in the name of Jesus uh, we pull down every hindrance uh, every resistance every opposition uh, we pull it down in the name of Jesus uh, lift up your voice in the precious name of Jesus we receive breakthrough the dominion of christ will reign in the name of jesus the dominion of christ will reign in that area in the name of jesus lift up your voice and ask the lord in prayer in jesus precious name and lastly we're going to pray as we eat the flesh of jesus tonight and as we drink the blood let every sickness in anyone's body die as you taste the blood in the name of jesus let every weakness go let every evil every evil deposit every poison anyone's body be flushed out lift up your voice and begin to pray whatever is abnormal whatever is out of order in anyone's life in anyone's brain in anyone's mind in anyone's emotions in anyone's physical body as we eat the flesh tonight as we drink the blood tonight we are made holy in the name of jesus lift up your voice and ask the lord in prayer in jesus mighty name tonight i want to say something to you please i want you to have faith in the blood and the flesh of jesus more than your faith for a headache in talanon 
So that as you drink the blood tonight, as you eat the flesh tonight, expect a change in your body. Expect healing. You know when somebody takes Tylenol, they said, oh, I just said Tylenol, is, it will go in a few hours. They can even take it and start hacking. No, it will kick in. I want you to see healing kicking tonight. I want to see the power of God kicking into your life, into your situations. I want you to know that overnight, something greater will have happened in your life. Because the communion table, by faith, is the power of God. His body is his power made available unto us. And his flesh is his power provided for